Hi, everybody. Great to have you here. I wonder if we could do a, a special thanks to our props department um, coming over here. You'll see more about that later. But can we thank them for having to stand out in front of all of you lot? <laughs> thanks, guys. Thoroughly appreciate it. Well, I never get tired of days like this. Baptisms, I just never get tired of it. And for those of you who came to support those being baptized, please, please hear this. It is so appreciated. And they may not have time to spend a lot of time with you, but it is really appreciated. Your support means a phenomenal amount to them. And also for you, if you're here and you're not used to coming here, thank you. That's just brilliant of you. They, they understand that. So we... We well, just want to say our thanks to you. Baptism tells the story. Do you know that? It, it actually says it all in one sense. They died, it died to an old way of life. That's uh, hence buried in the water. These people died to an old way of life. That's what they were saying. Uh, died to an old way of life, buried in the water. And then, just as Jesus was raised from the dead, they were raised raised in the water so to follow Jesus, have a new life in Christ. So that's, that's the story. That baptism actually tells the story. Um, I'm going to speak about a topic that I think addresses every one of us, whether you're baptized or not, or whether you go to church or not. I want to pick up on something that connects with all of us, and it's regrets, regrets. So some of them may be small and some may be big, but I guess each one of us, if we were to stop and pause, we would know we have them. If we just gave a moment, and we may not want to go there, but we, get, we know that we have them. I came across this picture from a film. It's called The We're the Millers. And Scotty P, who wants to date their daughter, sits down to a chat with the parents and then decides to show off his tattoo. It, it, really, it, it really helps if you have a tattooist that can spell. But um, uh, he made quite an impression on the parents, I can assure you. He made quite an impression on the parents. Um, tattoos... Regrets don't belong in movies. Uh, they happen in real life. So this is another tattoo on its way. I trust. There you go. So, you know, some tattoos last longer than relationships. And uh, look, if you're called Doug, I'm not, no offense meant, it, uh, meant at all. Please, please understand that. Um, but obviously, Doug is no longer the flavor of the moment. And uh, there's a, there is one, I went to, to two regrets, and uh, there's one of um, somebody who's got names of all these people on their arms with a cross out, and, a, and there's the second one that crossed out, and a third one that crossed out, and then, the, and then the fourth one, and I'm thinking, that's really optimistic. I mean, it's just, I like that. It's a very positive. Oh, well, that one didn't work, but this one might, this, and then perhaps this will work. And um, then, that's the truth, really. Sometimes... Sometimes tattoos last longer than relationships. And I wonder, if for those people, whether there's any sense of regret or not. On, a, on another note, I, I have regrets. I think we all have them. You know, my, my neighbors have regrets. They live next door to us. And on one occasion, I'm changing the oil in the car. I'm doing DIY, change the oil in the car. I put on the, uh, the, um, the filter, the oil filter, new oil filter. And for some reason, I, I just attached it. And it sits right underneath the car. And I fill the car up with oil. And then I, it just com I completely forgot about it. And then I drove the car in front of our driveway, in front of our neighbor's driveway. And then a thought came to me, did I attach the oil filter properly? As I was thinking this and stopped the car, our neighbor was coming up the road. The, behind me, you see, of course, there was this oil slick. So our neighbor's coming up the road and drives straight across the oil slick, oil slick right into their driveway with all the oil attached to the tires. I wonder if they regret 
that we move next door. Uh, they're still there, we're still there, and um, we like each other, so that's good. Uh, there are, uh, if I'm walking around, DIY is not my thing apparently, because if I'm walking around with a screwdriver, uh, my wife comes to me, Des, and she says, I, I just get, I get three degree, I get three degree interrogation as to what I'm doing with that screwdriver. I, I, she just, I have done myself out of DIY. If you want to know men how to do that, just let me know, I'll tell you about it. Anyway, so, uh, but you have to be electrocuted a few times to do that. Um, there are some, of course, some regrets that are less amusing, and actually, let's be, pa let's be honest, they're painful. There's a website called secretregrets.com, where people publicly post regrets, most of which are anonymous, that they can't say aloud. And uh, here's one of them. It's, uh, I regret leaving my fiance of 10 years. I did this six years ago. Not a day goes by that I don't regret it. He's happy now. He's married and happy. I'm stuck in a relationship with somebody who stresses me out daily. I'm broke, I'm stuck. And the point of it being, I have nowhere to go. There's another one, and it goes, if there's one thing I regret, it is that I should have appreciated my mum when she wanted to be my mum. Now, after her affair and divorce, I would do anything to have a mum. Do you know what, that's so heart-wrenching, isn't it? You go, okay, what happened there? Uh, anyway, it's universal emotion, this. And yet, it's unique to every person and, and deeply personal. So at the outset, I want you to know whatever the cause and whatever the magnitude, I trust that today will be a day of hope for you. That's, that's my intention. And that you do not, if this hits the spot for you, that you do not have to stay in the land of regret. You don't have to make it your home. You don't have to be paralyzed. That is where I'm stuck. So I, I think mainly they fit into two categories. You have regrets of actions and you have regrets of inactions. Actions are the sort of ones that are introduced with words like, I wish I'd never, I don't know how many times she said, I wish I'd never. And, and it may be lies we told. Maybe it's just started. One lie. It's amazing how lies tend to, they just concoct another lie. And then a, another lie, and, and then you think, I never, I, I wish I'd never started this. Or maybe it was anger, anger that we unleashed. Trust betrayed. I wish I'd never. Or oh, how about money we blew? Money we blew that we wish we hadn't wasted. And I, I wish I'd never. I wish I'd never done that. Then, then that's the words that we speak. The trouble with things that we say is the trouble with something that you say, you can't shovel it back in your mouth, can you? Yeah, the horse is bolted. It's gone. The words are gone. They're out there. They're said. I guess we've all done that. Just go this way if you haven't. And we'll ask how you managed to do that. But I guess we've all done that. Words we've said. Regrets of actions make up the biggest proportion of regrets. And sometimes, you know, mistakes that we make don't become apparent until a little while later. So there are regrets of action and there are regrets of inaction. So the Church of England uses what is known as, known as the, the Book of Common Prayer. And it has, a, in its service, it has this opportunity for the people at the service to say these words. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we've left undone. So it's not only things we've done, but it's also things we've left undone. So what would they be? They, they might be words that Words of love we should have expressed 
and didn't. And perhaps now the opportunity is gone and we can't. Maybe it's opportunities that we missed. Forgiveness withheld. Disputes left unresolved. Apologies never made. I have spoken to people and they said, I wish, I wish I'd resolved that with my friend. It was, you know, it was just a little thing and we let it get bigger and bigger. And I miss their friendship. I miss their friendship. A nurse recorded the most common regrets of the dying. And of those regrets, there's no mention of bungee jumps or more sex. You know, in the top five, I wish I'd stayed in contact with my friends. Another one is, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Some of us need to hear that. Regrets of action are things we do. Regrets of inaction are things we don't do. Do you know, there are, uh, there's, there's, another, there's another set of regrets. It's reaction. They're, 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 we regret what has happened to us. Sometimes there are things that have happened to us that we had no jurisdiction over. Uh, perhaps it's an illness that you got or abuse you took. Accident. An accident that happened I really regret that. Perhaps it's well, you're on the end of betrayal. There are all places where we can get stuck. So uh, there's an episode in the life of Jesus, one of Jesus' closest friends called Peter. And it's really helpful for us and I hope it'll be helpful for you. So I want to take a moment to look at two scenes in this man's life. And just to see how Jesus helped this man move on from the place of regret. So in a moment, we're going to go to Luke 22, verse 60 to 61. Don't worry if you do not have a Bible. The words will come up on screen. They'll come up for you. And anyway, I'm using a different version this time. And I, what I want to do is just give you a background before we go to that text, that passage. So in the first scene, Peter is warming himself by a fireside. It's a charcoal fire. He's standing amongst guards and onlookers. Jesus has just been arrested. He is now tied, bound, outside the high priest's house. He's about ready to be dragged in, dragged in amongst the religious leaders of the day. There's tension in the air. They've been with him for three years and he has irritated the life out of religious leaders. Now's the moment. And these guys know the tension. The disciples know and Peter knows this is a, this is a toxic mixture. And just a few hours before this, Peter boasted of his bravery and he declared he, he followed Jesus even to death. Do you know, I'll follow that man even to death. But now, standing by the fire, there's the smell of there's the smell of the fire, and there's the warmth of the fire. And yet he's nervous. It's tense. These people who've got their moment with Jesus, they're going to have their day. And Peter tries to blend in amongst all these other people. He wants to know what's going to happen next. And suddenly, somebody speaks to him. And she says to him, aren't you one of his followers? No, no, not me. And then there's a second and a third person. And they say to him, you, you, you must be one of them. You, you, I, I, I don't know, you, you must be one of them. He goes, no, no. And then he says, I'd even, I don't even know him. I don't even know him. I don't know what you're talking about. 
just at that time, a rooster crows. The Lord turned. And at that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. Actually, in one version it says, and he cried, and he cried, and he cried. Must have been the worst day of his life. All that Jesus had done for him. He wasn't just a disciple. He was one of the close three. He was best friends. All the time he'd spent with him. All the things they had shared together. And now his denials of Jesus are constantly running around his head. So he has walked away. And all he can think of are the words that he said. All he can think of. And he, could, he can recall every single moment. And he can recall everybody's reaction. And he can't change a thing. The abandonment of his friend. His bravado at saying, I'll follow you even to death. His three denials. Why didn't I take the opportunity? Why didn't I take, I had a second chance. I still said I didn't know him. I had a third chance. I still said I didn't know him. He can recall every minute. I don't know about you. On, on a number of occasions, I've, I've woken up from a dream. And uh, I, almost in a, in a sweat, I've got a, a dream, you know. And I realize it, with a sheer relief, it was just a dream. And, and it, there's a little moment here. Has anybody been in that situation? The sheer relief. It's like, whew, I'm glad it was just a dream. Because it wasn't fun in the dream. I'm glad it was just a dream. <laughs> Peter's never going to have a moment like that. This is his worst moment and he can't do anything about it. He can't change it. He can't turn the clock back. He doesn't get a second go. <sighs> I wish I could change it. I wish I could change it. Now after this, Jesus is condemned to death, beaten, crucified, and Peter is left with all this regret and failure. Even when Peter hears the news that Jesus is raised from the dead, nothing can erase that moment. It's done. He's done it. It actually happened. He can't take it back. Now he could have got stuck there with all these regrets. I don't know what you do with yours. But he could have got stuck there. You know, some regrets paralyze us and we never move on. Jesus does not allow him to do this. So that's why I want to take you to the second scene. Because Peter is fishing with his friends. And one of them recognizes this solitary person on a beach and he recognizes Jesus. And John shouts out, That's Jesus! And they have this big catch of fish. Huge catch of fish, but he's not interested in the fish. He's out the boat and he's going to Jesus. That's his first response. And not hanging around. And on the shore, Jesus is cooking breakfast. It's a nice scene actually in, in John 21. It's a really lovely scene. Here's the thing. It's another charcoal fire. It's got the smell of the fire. I wonder if he can remember the first, the, the fire just recently. This is another charcoal fire. The smell of it. Perhaps he can re recall all the, all the betrayal, all the words that he said come back to him. And Jesus takes the initiative. It says here, after breakfast Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He says, yes, Lord. Peter replied, you know I love you. And feed my lambs, Jesus said. 
what Jesus told him. He says this three times. Do you love me? Three denials, three times. Do you love me? You know I love you. Do you love me? Do you love me because I still love you? Peter, I still love you. That's what this is about. I still love you. Number three has a particular significance to a Jewish person. It's very significant. You know, words like holy, holy, holy. Th- three is the number of completeness. It's the number of wholeness. It's the number of healing. Then he's not unaware of it. Do you love me? Do you love me? Because I still love you. I still love you. No chastisement, no rehash at the moment, no cold shoulder. He just reaffirms his relationship. And then he says to him, feed my sheep. That means I've got a purpose for you and a plan for you that's beyond your regret. I've got purposes and plans for you. I need you, Peter. Listen, here's the thing. What Jesus does for Peter, he can do for you. Wherever you are, whatever's going on, what he does for Peter, he can do for you. He doesn't want you to live in the land of regret. You can move on. He gives Peter the way to move on. If there's an action that's going on and you know that keeps you just regret that, I please hear God say to you, I tell you, I still love you. Yeah, but, no buts, I still love you. Yes, but, no, no, no buts. I still love you. And what's more, I still have plans for you. I still have purposes for you. I still have things for you to do. Often we see regret as the finishing line, but in Jesus' case, look what he does with Peter. He says, it's the starting line. Do you know what? I still have plans for you. I got this for you. I got to affirm my relationship with you. This is the love of God, my friends. He says, follow me. He wants this day to be a new start in his life. Perhaps it might be the same for you. These people who got baptized, you heard great stories. My wife said to me, oh, they're great stories. And well, in the first meeting, there were great stories of what Jesus had done in people's lives and given them such a new start. Jesus does that. You're not to be defined by your past. You're not to be paralyzed by your past. Jesus wants to give you a future. Absolute future. He wants you to believe what he says about you and what he thinks about you. It's important to do this. You have to let Jesus reach into that place of regret. Otherwise, it'll keep coming to the surface. Can I have that little football here? Thank you. Much appreciated. (laughs) Regrets are like this. You know, you push them down and you try and pretend they don't exist. That thing's coming up. I don't know, whichever way you do this, that thing's coming up. In the first meeting, it came up and went in there. So that was, that was the end of my illustration. <laughs> but it takes a lot of effort. I can feel this. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of emotional energy. It takes a lot of effort to keep your regrets down. And then something happens, just a moment, just a thought, just the smell of a fire, up it comes. You really don't want that for your life. Just don't want that to happen for you. I remember as a young Christian, I had one of these. It's, I, I just didn't want to go back there because it was, it was too horrible. And the things I, it was to do with someone before I was a Christian and uh, the way I had, what I had done and that, that regret kept coming up. And this is the thing, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't go to the person I couldn't go to the person. There are situations here I can't go into and you don't want to know either. But I could not go to that person. I couldn't go. And that thing kept coming up. What are you going to do with that thing that keeps coming up? You've got to do something with it. I'll tell you what. what. What does Peter do? 
He goes, the first thing he does is he gets out of that boat. He gets out of that boat. And he rushes to Jesus. The thing about regrets, my friends, is this. They have... um, You can bury them, but they're not dead. You can hide them, but they're still powerful. They sit below the surface of our lives and they feed off shame and heartache. That's what regrets do. What a, what a wonderful thing that Jesus does with Peter. He doesn't want him to live in this land. You can recognize it. You can do something about it. None of us can change our past. But we do have a choice about our future. None of us can change our past. But you do have a choice about your future. This man takes it to Jesus. What did I do about that person and that situation? Actually, I took it to him. There was nowhere else to go with it. I took it to him. I want to give that opportunity today. Is that where you might be? I, you know, is, that, is this, actually, I regret the life I lived. I really want to follow Jesus. I want to give you that opportunity today. Or maybe it's, do you know, I used to be this. I used to be... I used, to, I used to be amongst God's people, but to know I, I'm, I lapsed. I'm, I, I went off and did my own thing. Per, perhaps this is your day. But to come back to him. You do not have to live in this place of regret. Something done to you? Something you did? Something you didn't do? You don't have to live there. But you do have to bring it to the one who takes it all and heals all of our past and gives us a whole future. Let's close our eyes, can we please? This is a huge topic, I realize. But with every, every part of this topic... What the key thing is, the first step is we have to recognize, do you know what? That's me. I have that regret. You have to recognize it. And the second thing is, what are you going to do with it? Because the one who makes us clean, the one who forgives all our sins, is Jesus Christ. That's why these people got baptized and can start a new life. I just want to offer that to you.